Oh, oh hey. <laughs> <laughs> that was a purple and brown. In case you feel like editing that, that's what that was from. Where he's like, well, hey. Woohoo! That was the one where he's blowing bubbles. That's me and Danner when we get together, purple and brown. Hey guys, Scanner Danner here, talking quiet because there's people over there. <laughs> and the people over there is the car we're working on. Um, this is actually a friend of mine. It's um, my neighbor's daughter and um, we worked on this car before. You guys have seen this car before. It had a headlight problem at my brother's shop. It is a Dodge Charger. Uh, it's white. I don't remember the year. I think maybe 08. But I was told that the car does not crank. And this problem has been intermittent for like a few years since the battery and starter were replaced. And they said they had this problem really ever since intermittently wouldn't crank. And um, that's where we are right now. We're in the driveway or we're on the road and we're kind of doing a Christmas bailout here. Nobody has extra money for Christmas anyway. And we're gonna try to help out our friends here with this snow crank. So I haven't even tried it. I have the key in my hand. My suspicions are I'm gonna get inside this car and it's gonna start. And then I'm gonna be really angry. So I haven't even tried it. I think that's what's gonna happen. We'll see. You missed it. I was just doing something. Hang on, I'm adjusting my settings again. Are you fanning yourself? I was. Alright. Ready? Watch, it's gonna start. Key on. Let me get the wheel straight. So maybe you can see the dash. So I can see it. I got nothing. I can't see that. Okay, that's good. We have absolutely nothing. <laughs> it just started. <laughs> when I first turned the key, nothing's happening. And then I held it. That was way delayed, like super delayed. Like I hit the key, focus on the key here for a second. Well, these new newer systems, push button systems are like this too. When you turn the key, it goes through a cycle. Yeah. It, it doesn't just like older cars, you have to hold it in the crank position. Even my truck, if I hit it to the crank and then let off, it'll continue to crank for 10 seconds if it doesn't start. Yeah. So it's a momentary on off switch. So watch, <laughs> nothing. That, that was really delayed. That was really delayed battery's weak you heard you know on that one the more i do this it's going to be worse that's what we need that battery's weak like that time it didn't even try to listen to the way it cranks That shouldn't be doing that. I think I think his battery's just crap. Low voltage, it may just, mm. I don't know, I'm gonna put a charger on it. Cause that last crank was like real bad. Mm -hmm. Let's see, um, focus on this window for a second. I'm gonna put it down, let's watch and see how slow it may be. That wasn't bad, that wasn't bad. All right, we're gonna go under the hood. Or we could put the scan tool on it first. Stay here. Let's do that. Murphy's Law, right, Caleb? Actually, That's I think what they you're... call it. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Okay. See, it says 11.7 in the bottom right corner. So battery voltage is weak. Display fitted system list. Yes, absolutely. Let's do a quick code scan. I'm showing 11.7 with, with, with us not cranking. The battery is weak right now. Uh, I have an engine code that says implausible left wheel uh, distance signal received. Implausible left wheel distance, that's transmission. Left rear wheel speed, comparative performance, that's in the ABS. So these are ABS faults. 
the engine's really what I'm interested in, even though I'm doing a full scan. All right, this is in the engine system. Yeah, the only code that was in there was that implausible wheel speed. I'm not worried about that. Go to our data. Ignition, maybe? Might be accessories. That might be ignition system, not like ignition key. Yeah, that's, that's really what that is. Uh, it has skim data in here, which is the anti-theft. So maybe we'll use this one. Let me just see what's in the accessory list real quick. Yeah, this is probably more than one I want. All right, let's customize this. All right, I'm going to look at some of this while I crank it. Looking at battery voltage of 11.8. Ignore that spike. Uh, the minimum is 11.7, max is 11.8, so it's a, just a real narrow scale. I'm holding it in the crank position now. Vehicle theft state says seen. Just saw this desired like double start override. I don't know what that is. It says off now. If I hold it in the crank position or if I, I go to the crank position that says on. And then off. I'll do it again. Watch my finger. I turn the key. Desired double start override. I don't know what the data parameter means, but that is a crank circuit. When I go to the crank position, it does say on. Let me get out of this data list, go to the other one. And I know my battery is weak, but 11.7, it should be enough to initiate the sequence at least. I'm afraid when I um, put a charger on this, it may boost system voltage and then fix our, our problem. We might have a hard time identifying mm -hmm. it. Uh, let's see what data parameters would be helpful here. Crank system fault, cam system fault. Now that's cam and crank signals. I'm not worried about those. Ignition start switch filtered, ignition run start switch filtered, ignition off time. There's that desired double start override again. Voltage sense, battery voltage, skim data. That's anti-theft stuff. It just didn't really give me anything else other than the ignition start switch, ignition run. So if I watch my hand down here again, Caleb, and look at the top right, it says ignition run. So if I turn that off, you see that went off. Turn that back to the run position that is on. Move over to the crank position. Ignition start switch filtered says on. So we're getting all of the signals there to make this thing crank. So now what I want to focus on, because that sequence is there, I want to focus on the starter relay itself because the inputs are there, the output would be the relay that controls the starter, and I really wanna focus on that. Uh, I'm speaking a little bit ahead of myself because I haven't looked at a diagram and I don't know the design on this, and if the starter relay is part of the totally integrated power module, which is known as a TIPM, and these are major issues on Chrysler's, um, so I need to pull a diagram and see where that relay is. If it's part of the TIPM, we may have a TIPM failure that's going on here. Let me just look at this anti-theft stuff real quick, the skim, and make sure. It says VTA vehicle, I'm not sure what these abbreviations are. VTA has completed, skim slash VTA completed. It says true. 
So when I pulled the key out, put the key back in, it went false, then true. Invalid key received is false. So if that said true, then we would have an issue with anti-theft. Valid key received by NGC. So those are all showing false. Vehicle theft data was seen. I don't think this is a theft issue. I don't have a theft light on. I have no theft codes. Yeah, we're definitely going to go to our... Um, I, I need to put a charger on this, and we're going to go to the relay. So we could start with the diagram, uh, but let's go at least have a look and see what we see under the hood. Yeah, they're definitely not marked at all. Thirteen five. I hope it doesn't start with the charger on it, but I'm gonna try to turn the key and see what happens. That was immediate. This this could just be a weak battery. That's key off. It is delayed when I turn the key. Linda, does this ever not start um, after you've been driving it and you come out of the store? Yeah. Or is it? It happens when I'm at dad's. So. I'm in his driveway. Yeah. It'll have that hesitation. Okay. So um, it isn't just after sitting overnight. Like it will, it, it would be after you're driving it, you go stop at your dad's for 10, 15 minutes, go out and try to start it and then it, and then it does it. Cause right, as soon as I put the charger on it, now it's starting every time, of course. Ever since they put a new starter in and that battery, I've had this issue off and on. I mean, we were like, it can't be the starter. We just replaced it. Yeah. So, and that was pretty much right. Why was the starter done? And the, were the starter and battery done at the same time? Yeah. Okay, and then uh, since that, like, I guess it was completely dead, and then since you got it back, it started and ran, but had this problem intermittently Off since. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so based, based on those descriptions, I don't believe that this is just weak battery voltage. I, I believe that my concerns were valid in that we put a charger on this, and now it's going gonna, it's gonna to mask this problem. But when I hit the key, there's still a delay even though it's starting each time. Let's see if we can show that. It was delayed. Watch it again. It should immediately, as soon as I hit that, watch. That should have cranked it right there and it didn't. Just a smidge. And she said that since, ever since the starter and battery were replaced they were having these problems that makes me want to go down to the starter and check it but i can't we're in i don't have a jack i don't have jack stands we're in the middle of a, a road there is not a chance that i'm going to be able to voltage drop test that starting circuit from where we are so what do you want to do? i don't know i think we're done until we get this to danner's shop and at least you can drive it there now and doesn't have to have it towed we need to i got to get it up in the air i can't can't do that test. Let me uh, look at the wiring diagram real quick just to familiarize myself with the starting system and see if there's a relay up top. Maybe I can do some checks up there. So the other thing too here is the battery is absolutely weak on this regardless. I mean, it, it, it is possible it's just a battery issue, but all right, so starting system diagram. I'm pretty certain that the tipum is involved here, but so park neutral switch, pull in and hold in windings. And this comes up to the starter relay, which is in the totally integrated power module. Now, what I don't know is, is it inside or is it outside? Is it one of these? So fuse number eight is a 25 amp it's this one right here should be this one 
given that that's the fuse, that might be the starter relay. Let's see if we can get a better picture. Let me just describe this to you guys real quick and how this works. We have control side and load side for the starter relay. Uh, the control is the coil itself. There's one of the wires, if it would highlight for me. And that goes to my engine computer. It says starter relay control. And then you can see that the other side is in the box. And uh, I'm not going to be able to draw inside, but if ignore the the highlight highlighted wires below as I click the box, it highlights them all. But just follow this wire up top that I'm clicking on. And the starter coil driver that's inside this totally integrated power module, this module would supply most likely power on this side and then the computer controls the ground on this side so it needs both of those to function and control the relay when that happens when this makes a magnetic field then this switch here load side the switch look at pin 30 pin 87 um, for that to close that's when 85 and 86 make a magnetic field and then we have power that comes from the red that's the in this will be coming in where's that go to yeah, that taps into the main cable pass-through post. That's battery positive, comes in, feeds the chip in this integrated power module, also splits and goes over to fuse number eight, which is a 25 amp. We could do some voltage checks there right at that fuse. Um, I can start with that. I can, I can do that. See, the nice thing about that is that gives me the ability to monitor voltage, which I'm really interested in for that circuit. What we're trying to do here, folks, is we're trying to avoid having this taken at my brother's shop and um, doing the checks up on the rack. And, you know, it's nice to start at the starter, but given where we're located, I can't do that. And I'm trying to do everything I can for her here today. Otherwise, this is going to have to wait till after Christmas. Just trying to help. All right, I need a good ground. Just checking my meter here first. 14 volts. All right, so that's battery voltage all the time. That makes sense. Let me go back to that diagram. Yeah, fuse eight is hot all the time. So I don't want to see a voltage drop there. That'll address when it cranks, that will address this, this cable right here coming into this splice. It will also address where it comes from, which is over uh, to the battery itself. So I can't draw on this, but this double red. So what we're about to check here is this wire through this pass-through post over to the splice and then back up to the totally integrated power module and fuse eight. I'm adapted over here to fuse eight. It's also gonna give me an indication of the voltage available down here, even though we could have a drop still down in this section, but it'll at least tell me from S138, right above that blue line, from there down or from there up is good. So that's the test we're doing. This isn't really, an ideal starting point, as I said, but I'm gonna watch that line. I'm on a graphing meter. I'm not gonna miss anything here. I don't need a real fast time base. I just need to make sure I'm seeing the whole picture and what I want from this. 30 second time base, when you're on the graphing meter, you do not have to worry about sample rate. It'll capture every bit of a 300 microsecond glitch, no matter what time base I pick, that's what I'm more interested in. That's why I picked the graphing meter over the lab scope for this test. So I can go inside, you can stay there. I'm just gonna hit the key. And we'll do that again so I can see it twice. We 
will have a drop. A drop is normal. What it drops down to, just use cursor one. That drop down to, looks like I'm not right on that. 877 at the bottom of that spike. That's, that's a little bit low. But that's system voltage. This thing, it even sounds labored in the way that it cranks. Initial, initial crank down to 8.7. You know, I really don't want to drop in below 9.6. This battery is still weak. It'd be nice to go right at the battery, but I, I don't think this is a problem. I know we're looking for low voltage, but I believe that this low, lower than I like voltage I'm talking about is because of the battery still being weak. We got here, it was 11.7. Um, I don't see this as being a cable problem to this point. I'm gonna pull this relay out just to see if the engine starts. That might be the starter relay, given it's right next to that fuse. Let's see if it starts with that relay removed. Sweet. I'm thinking that's my starter relay. Okay, the tool that everyone wants and you can't have because AES Wave hasn't made any more yet. It's this one. So we need to get on our friends at AES to make some more U activate tools here for us because this is the tool of choice for this for sure. So this is a five pin relay, but it's only four pins are being used. We're not using the middle pin. And it showed us that on the diagram as well. Okay, that is my starter relay. We'll plug this bad boy in here. Whoops, oh, goodness, I had the switch on. <laughs> I, I had, look, I had the switch on. So <laughs> it cranked it. The reason why that this is able to crank it when I flip the switch, essentially what I'm doing, if you guys look at this diagram, is I'm connecting 30 and 87, and 30 has power all the time, right? That's the fuse that I'm connected to here um, that ties into that splice that we were just talking about, and it comes from that circuit that I just highlighted blue. There's power there, so if I flip the switch, I have the key on, that's why the car's running. If I'd turn this key off and leave it off, I could still make it start, or I could still make it crank, but it wouldn't start. So right now the key's off, watch. So what I'm thinking, because I wanted to do some voltage checks at the starter, let me think about that for a second. When we energize that circuit, what are we energizing? We're energizing the solenoid. So that's the solenoid wire. Yeah, and I, um, I really want to do voltage measurements at the starter for the delay. Okay, let me think about this for a second. How can I catch the delay with this in, in here? Okay, we can use the, the LED light. Let's do that. Let's do that focused on that guy right there. Whenever It's not gonna crank because I have the relay out. But when I hit this key, that's the run position. As soon as I hit the crank, yeah, that light should light. And it is, and it'll, it'll stay lit because even though my hand's off the ignition, it's about a 10 second window. It's gonna keep that circuit energized. So key out, key back in, run position, hit it once. See that light didn't stay lit. I thought it would. Let me wait for a second. Key out, key in. Light staying lit. Engine would be cranking right now. There was no delay there whatsoever, none. And for that light to light, it needs a power and a ground. So it's getting both. There was no delay. Now if I, hold, if I hit it, the second I hit it, that light lights. To initiate another Long crank, I just hold it longer and let go. But there's no delay there at all. And that makes me say the totally integrated power module's fine, the engine computer is fine, the wiring up to this relay is fine, 
and then our problem is relay to starter, which means we got to get down to the starter. Every time I hit that key, it is immediate. It is immediate. So how can I prove? I wonder if I can create a delay. I should be able to create a delay here though. Maybe, maybe. Let's go uh, back under the hood. Here's what I think based on the tests that we just did. I think our problem exists on this leg of the circuit. I mean, you know, it could even be the relay itself that could have an issue in the delay part. So maybe we, we swap this relay with another one um, before, we, before we leave today and then try to get a follow-up from, from them. But based on what they said with the starter, this having this issue ever since the starter was replaced and the starter and battery were replaced at the same time, I think somebody blew the call there. I, I'm not sure that it would have needed both. That just doesn't really happen. You don't replace the starter and the battery at the same time. Now it could be that the starter went bad and that they found the battery was super old. And in that case, absolutely, starter and battery at the same time, maybe that's the issue uh, or that's the situation. Um, but the fact that this problem has been here since that was done puts us down toward the starter again. That's what I'm seeing here. Control side of the circuit is working as designed. It's the load side that's not. So I should be able to recreate a delay here um, if I... And the fact that I'm not, like if I had a problem, if I had a problem from here down, I was, I was gonna do some amperage measurements, which I can do and measure the starter current, but um, on the solenoid side, but I don't do that a lot. So as far as numbers go, you know, initial starter amperage on the solenoid might be 40 amps when both pull-in and hold-in windings are energized. And then when the pull-in winding de-energizes, we might have a 10 amp, 15 amp after. So what I'm getting at is I don't think that test is gonna be very helpful over top of just listening, me closing the switch, listening for a delay. So if I'm monitoring amperage and I don't do that a lot and I don't know exact specs, what are we gonna see? I just don't think it's gonna be helpful. And I think just flipping the switch, that's immediate. It's immediate. If we had a problem from there down, as I was just describing, I would be able to recreate it here with this. So now I got to worry about this relay. And I want to switch it with one of these other ones. I just don't want to switch it with something really important. So let's get some service info here on the relay box. Unless I have one of these, I might. <laughs> Yeah, same number too, <laughs> exactly. So let's, let's plug this one in and then go back into the car. Let's see if we have a delay. Let me get it, get that on. I'm gonna put the other relay back in too. There wasn't one at all. There's run. Nothing. Let me go plug this other relay back in. Yeah. See these these relay checks can be done with voltage drop tests starting at the starter and then backing up. We're just kind of doing things as best we can here in the street. <laughs> Let's watch that again. Dude. <laughs> you know, sometimes, sometimes you can get lucky. I feel a little bit lucky here today for multiple reasons. Sometimes Caleb and I get really, really excited because we don't have to come back and we're done. And we know that uh, we just nailed it, right? Mm -hmm. And that makes for a good video for everyone and including Caleb and I where 
Sometimes what you guys don't see behind the scenes would be, it might be days to get, you know, we make a call and then we got to get a part, then we got to replace it, yeah, dude, then we got to film that part, then we got to edit that part. You guys have no idea. We're talking about days worth of work in comparison to be able to pick something like this. This is a faulty relay. This is a faulty relay. Watch it again. Major delay. It was there. And, and, and the other thing too, that to match this is battery voltage. Hold on, let's watch it again. Watch. I held it that time, but it was, you could see the delay. Watch. That was a good one. This is with the good relay. You want the other one one more time? Uh, Ready? That was a pretty decent delay. <laughs> it didn't even start that time. Cool. That's awesome. All right, um, let's go back under the hood real quick. I had another relay. That's great. Swap relays. That's great. And you know, you're in a pinch somewhere you're, you're stuck and you can at least, you know, Google where your starter relay is and swap relays around and see if your car starts, you know, by all means do that. Um, we're trying to, uh, be able to pinpoint with, with tools and make sure we're right. And you know, a lot of times when you swap relays, it doesn't work. In fact, most times when you swap a relay, it doesn't work. And then, then, then you're lost and then you have to do the tests that we're showing here. So um, in, in light of that, uh, the tests are super valuable. Swapping the relay is great too. But what I was thinking about is how else could you identify that? This is a load side contact issue, right? Um, you could make the argument the control side of the relay could be messed up too. Um, but in my opinion, this would be a contact issue on the load side. And what you could do is you could lift the relay slightly and you could do measurements on the pins. Now that gives you access to the pins underneath. You could do measurements on the load side contacts, whichever ones they are, I think here and here, or it'd be opposite corners. And then what you'd see is you could see your voltage drop on the feed and then your um, switch side on the load. And I bet you we'd see some kind of a bounce. I just wanna do this just for you guys. This, we're just having fun now. Uh, this needs a relay, okay? If you've found this video because your Dodge Charger isn't cranking intermittently, um, swap your starter relay, go have a nice life. You saved yourself a couple of bucks. You guys that are with me, that are learning, technicians or do-it-yourselfers that really wanna learn this stuff, stay with me here for a minute. My load side contacts, if you look at the relay where my hand is, 30 is the top left and 87 is the bottom right. And so when I plug this in, it's gonna be bottom left and top right, cause it's opposite, right? It's mm -hmm. those two pins, flip it over, right? All right, so 30 and 87. I gotta be careful in this. I don't want to cross pins, really important. I don't cross pins. I want, I'd like to be able to clip onto it. The reason I say you don't wanna cross pins, we could smoke a computer here if you crossed a, these two pins on the computer or on the relay on the control side, don't want to do that. So this is 87. I'm going to clip on that. And then I'm just going to go to my test lead. Let's take a look and see what this looks like when we're cranking it. Let's drop this down to a 10 second window and crank this over. That's load side con, oh yeah, that's really bad. That's an awesome picture. This is what I expected to see too. If you look at the, at the image, what we should see, I'll show you what the new relay looks like. It's pretty, it'll be pretty, pretty awesome in comparison. When I first cranked it from here, mm -hmm. it should, that's the switch closing. Finger and finger switch, right? Pin 30 is my big ass thumb. That's hot all the time. What does it do? switches to 87. I'm saying the contact's bad in between. Mm -hmm. We're on 87 right now. So what should happen, I'm connected here, zero volt, zero volt, zero volts. What should it do as soon as it closes? It should go to 12. 
because this is 12. My thumb is 12 all the time. My index finger is zero. Thumb's 12. 12. 12 on the thumb, zero on the finger. As soon as those touch, it should go to 12 and stay there. Here's what we see. Look at the, look at the picture. Zero, right? Mm -hmm. What's it do? 12. Spikes, comes down, spikes back up, then cranks. That's your delay. That's your delay right there. Mm -hmm. So, so that's the first, the bad contact. that's the bad contact. This is good. That's what you want it to do. It shouldn't look like that. So you shouldn't have any. No, none of that should, should be there. Right to Correct. Cranking. Yep. And then this one, same thing. I shut it off, restarted it. There's zero right there. It goes up to 12, major delay, bunch of spikes, then finally, finally latches and cranks the engine over. And the reason you have this tail, the tail end of that would be the... Uh, counter electromotive force of the spinning motor. Remember when those contacts close, we have an electric motor that's spinning. So we will have those oscillations in the signal. When you look at the top part up here, and you see those oscillations, that's from the starter motor spinning. That's okay. What's not okay in this picture is that image right there and that image right there, right between the first spike and the second spike that should not be there. I'm gonna grab that a couple more times. This is one of the best faulty relay pictures I think I've ever seen. Or ever create, let me restate that, or ever created on my own. That was my fault. Yes, yeah, bad. Yes, sir. The first image was really good. One more time. Snapshot that image. And then let's run that. Oh, uh, one other piece what you could do is that's the, remember my thumb and finger, 12 volt side uh, all the time. Finger was the 87, right? The switch side. Hot all the time, switch side. We can move over to the hot all the time side and make sure we're not getting drops there. Because if we're getting drops on that side, then we have a supply side issue to the relay and it's not a bad relay. And that would be the check you do to call the relay as being bad. So I'm gonna switch over to the hot all the time side. This is where I do not wanna to touch one of these other pins. If I touch this supply side to another pin, in light of education, we're gonna be really, really upset because we're gonna be smoking a computer. So this is like really dangerous. All right, 12 volt feed, hot all the time. This is my thumb now we're on, right? Watch that signal. I don't wanna see those drops. And what would make that a really nice picture, see those, that looks good. Um, the drops that we're seeing is just system voltage from when the engine cranks. Starting from there, 12 volts, right? I crank it over, we actually get a bounce there. It looks like that initial bounce would be the result of poor contact. Because what happens when, when we have contact and then no contact then contact again we get a drop in voltage a rise in voltage then a drop in voltage um that looks good i i know i'll ex be able to explain this better i i'm teaching right now you guys just need to suffer with me this is just i'm having fun now i'm just i'm just showing that if you know what you're looking for you can identify these problems without swapping components Let's try a relay. What if that relay was inside the tip of module and you couldn't get to the contacts but you, or the relay to switch it, but you could do these tests? Learn what I'm teaching. It's important. Doing two channels now. I'm going load side to both, being very careful that I'm not touching any other pin. And let's turn channel two on. We want this on volts DC as well. 20 volts. All right, ready? This will be both. I'll be able to explain it better. Delay, big time delay. There you go. 
there you go all right so let me pull a cursor in so i can talk about this so look green trace switch hasn't closed right um yellow, yellow trace is the is the ignition key so the reason we had a drop right there is i turned the key to the run position right and then what happened switch closed right there at that point in time no voltage drop notice when the voltage drop occurs on the green trace there is no voltage drop in the yellow trace supply side is fine the supply side did not cause that voltage drop there's only one possible cause to that right there right now faulty contact mm -hmm. if you had a drop in the yellow trace at that moment no, we, we covered it already. I want this capture one more time, but I want to drop my time base down to five seconds. Major delay. All right, sweet. That's a good capture, son. That section right there. Yellow trace voltage is going to drop. Of course, when I turn the key on, you see a, a small drop with things being exercised. Mm -hmm. Then I hit it to the crank position the moment I hit it to the crank position was the first green line yeah. when that switch closed. Yeah. The delay was what? The time where my cursor is in between, in between right here and right here, right there and right there is our delay. And we have a major, major loss of voltage. It went to about eight initially, then dropped back down to two and then came up to 10. And now this is the engine cranking in here. There's your delay, no drop in yellow, supply is good. That makes sense? Yeah. All right, let's watch the same thing with the new relay. Thirty. Eighty-seven. Don't want that guy touching anything. Fire and hole. Nice. Such is what we wanted to see. Check it out. What do you see right away? Oh, instant. No delay. Yeah. Nice, huh? Done. Done. No, we're not. Last piece. Always... Let's just take this relay apart. That's Dude, all. I just no. want to see the inside of the relay. Everybody else you... wants to see it too. I've told you so many times. <laughs> ending a video with you is like leaving Target with my wife. <laughs> it's never done. <laughs> Fortunately, it's a nice easy one to take apart. Oh! Ow! Freaking hurt. Look, I'm bleeding. I'm bleeding. Ah, I'm bleeding. I'm bleeding. That hurts. Not bad. Didn't look like the calculator. It did not. Okay, before I forget, why, why, this is to you too, as we're talking to everybody else, why would low battery voltage aggravate this problem? It was better. As soon as I put the charger on it, it was better. Any <laughs> contact problem can be overcome, which is a resistance problem, can be overcome with higher voltage. Once you get that current flow to start and it makes good contact, it'll continue. Higher voltage will fix that problem. Not fix it, but make it better. Uh, we're not gonna be able to see these contacts unless I really rip this apart. All right, so it's this side. Yeah, there's your burnt contact right there, mother <laughs> So that contact, oh, there's blood on my thumbnail too. There's blood. I'm pointing at it with the blood okay. right there, right, mm -hmm. is the burnt contact. So if we look at the other side of it, which is a side we're not using, that's what it should look like. Mm -hmm. That's what it looks like. That's half of it. Let me show you the other half of it. It's this terminal. Let me pull it out of there. All the blackness there is the arcing. Every time that contact would close there, it would arc. And that's normal. And over time, that's what you get, man, with these relays. This is a good lesson for if any of you do-it-yourselfers have stayed with me this long. Uh, speaking to you, because I hear these comments, 
not just do-it-yourselfers, but maybe even some of you guys that haven't been doing this for a long time, and, and you have this idea that, well, if a relay clicks, it's good. A relay clicking does not tell you the relay is good. Will a relay with a bad contact like this, the load side contacts, will it still click? Of course it will, because the control side makes a magnetic field. What's it do? Click. But what's the problem? The contact between my index finger and my thumb is the problem. So it's going to click. It makes a sound. Relay clicked. It must be good, right? Wrong. That is a huge, major in uh, inconception. What is wrong with me? <laughs> that is a, a major <laughs> misconception in our field is, is that when a relay clicks, it's good. So this is good, man. I mean, I am really happy for them. It's Christmas time. We were able to bail out a friend. This would have been at least um, a few hundred dollar job because they don't have AAA. They would have had to have it towed. And then a diagnostic fee, at least a few hundred dollars, at least. And then you hope you have it taken somewhere that somebody knows what they're doing and isn't just gonna throw parts at the car. This is just a faulty relay. This is done. We're good. Caleb, thanks for being cameraman. Guys, thanks yeah. for joining us. I know this is a simple no crank problem, but um, look beyond the small amount of time you spend with me learning this and think about the material that's in here. There's a lot of good stuff. And I have a recommendation, and I do this too. If you don't have an hour to watch one of my videos, watch it in times two. I talk real funny and fast, but you can get through the video in 30 minutes. I do it too all the time. When I watch other people's YouTube videos and it's long, I just put it on either 1.75 or, or times two, and it just, I can get through them quicker and get through what I need to see and just a suggestion. But I edit in times too because you talk slow. <laughs> I do talk slow. Guys, thank you for joining us. Merry Christmas. It is two days before Christmas 2020. 2020, I am looking forward to that year going away. But uh, we're, we're grateful that you guys are with us here. And we just want to wish you guys a Merry, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And uh, look forward to a a prosperous 2021 for all of you. See you next time.